Hi, thanks for joining us for another unforgettable episode of Zoo School. My name is Meg, I'm an educator here at the zoo, and I'm also one of the coordinators for our chapter of AZA's Frog Watch program. We do a lot of conservation projects here at the zoo, as you might have seen in previous Zoo School episodes. But Frog Watch is unique because it involves citizen scientists, who are people just like you, who go out and listen to frog and toad calls and submit the data to scientists. So why is that important? You probably hear frogs all the time and don't even realize it. Have you ever heard that before? The first time I heard that, I thought it was crickets. But that is actually the call of the Northern Spring Peeper, one of Rhode Island's local native frogs. We know that Northern Spring Peepers are found across all over Rhode Island. And we know that because we have 12 years of data submitted by dedicated frog watchers who have been recording those calls. Frogs and toads are bioindicators, which means that they tell us a lot about the habitats they live in. They actually take in water and breathe through their skin. So if their habitat's really polluted, it's really hard for them to thrive there. So if you are hearing a lot of frogs and toads, that means the habitat around you is pretty healthy. And that's important for our health too. So let's hop over and meet a frog. I have with me today, Paul. Paul is an Amazon milky tree frog. So you probably wouldn't find him in your backyard, but you might find a gray tree frog. Let's observe Paul and see some things that we're noticing. He's showing you a couple of his really cool adaptations. It's almost like he's posing for the camera. I see on the tops of his feet something that looks like it's really helpful to help him climb. They look almost like big circle dots. And those work like plungers. They help them to be able to hang on sideways. In the rainforest where they live, they sometimes hang out up in the trees and that helps them so that they don't fall. He also has some pretty unique color. The frogs and toads in Rhode Island, they're all pretty dark, but he's got some almost like teal blue colors on him. How do you think that might help him? Think about what you know about bright colors in nature. A lot of times they can be a warning to other animals. And I think his color probably is a warning because the milky tree frog doesn't drink milk. But the milky tree frog has bumps all over his back. And when something's going to eat them, this stuff comes out that looks like milk and it's actually a poison, and that helps so that they don't get eaten. What else do you notice about him? I can see that he has some pretty cool eyes. I bet those eyes might help him when he's underwater. So if frogs and toads are something that you find totally awesome, you can participate in the Frog Watch program too. Trainings are usually held in January and February and March. So this year it's already passed, but next year it's definitely something that you can do. And the season runs all the way through the summer. So we are collecting frog and toad calls now. I think we're up to like almost 150 calls, which is awesome for a year. You can also take part in a new app by the Department of Environmental Management called Herp Observer. And what that is, is an app where when you go and explore, if you find pictures of reptiles or amphibians, you can submit your pictures to the scientists who can help to identify them and figure out where all these species are in Rhode Island. If you have any pictures of amphibians or reptiles that you've seen in your backyards or your neighborhoods, drop it in the comments below. We'd love to see them. Thanks so much for joining us for Zoo School. We'll see you later.